I am live. Anna English here with my cup of tea, ready to talk to you about Italy. So of course I'm live streaming from my phone once again and um, I do hope that you can see me and hear me okay. Now as I'm talking I'm going to get the stream up hopefully on my laptop here so that I can also type to you in the comments section although nothing's coming up yet. Ooh, where is it? And um, here we go. Let me get this up and then I can talk to you in the comments because I can't see the comments very easily on my phone. Hello, hi, lovely, lots of you joining me here. So I spoke to you last week about the coronavirus. Obviously this is an English lesson, not a news broadcasting channel, but it's always helpful to use the news in order to learn vocabulary and to improve our reading and listening and things like that. So coronavirus is obviously on everyone's mind at the moment because it's affecting so many countries and so many people around the world. And last week we learnt a number of words. So I'm just going to quickly recap the words that we learnt. We learnt epidemic, pandemic, the word contagious, makeshift, incubation period, infection, vaccine, cases, diagnosis, pneumonia, flu, cough, <coughs> sneeze, achoo, fever, hot, identify, strategy, containment, confine and self-isolate. Today I've got a handful of new words for you and what we're going to be looking at is an article um, that was released yesterday on the BBC News about what's happening in Italy. Now Italy is one of the worst affected countries within Europe and it's, um, it's having a really difficult time at the moment. So if anyone here is watching from Italy and you're locked down, then my thoughts are with you and hopefully this will resolve itself soon. So I'm going to read to you now. Now, as I read, hopefully I'll find the words that I want to pick out. I'll stop and explain those words to you. But if you hear any words that you don't understand, then write in the comments, what does, and then the word mean. So what does this mean? Okay, let's get started. So, the number of people to have died from the coronavirus in Italy has shot up by 133 in a day to 366, officials say. Now, to shoot up is to go up very quickly. You shot up. Also notice, as I go through this, how I say the big numbers. I always use the word and after the word hundred. 133, 133, and then I say 366, 366. So keep that in mind. Um, one of you just asked me, what does, um, what does quarantine mean? If you quarantine someone or something, you put it into a confined space. You don't allow it to leave. You keep it still to stop it from spreading. Okay, so it's in quarantine. Um, it's a special, a special condition so that it can't spread. <clears throat> okay, so those numbers have shot up. The total number of infections leapt 25% to 7,375 from 5,883, according to the Civil Protection Agency. So there they've used shot up and the word leapt. So to leap is to jump from one leg to another. That's if I were to leap. We can talk about numbers leaping, meaning they take a big jump. So it's made a big transition. Okay. So the jump in figures comes as millions adapt to radical measures introduced on Sunday in an attempt to contain the outbreak. I'm going to read that sentence again because there's a few words I want to go over. The jump in figures 
The jump in figures comes as millions adapt to radical measures introduced on Sunday in an attempt to contain the outbreak. Now, firstly, the word adapt. If you're not familiar with the word adapt, it means to make changes in order to fit a new purpose. So if your environment changes, you have to change to fit with the new environment. If you are a teacher and perhaps you're teaching students who just don't understand what you're saying, you might have to adapt your teaching style, change your teaching style in order to help those students. Okay, so to adapt is to change in order to fit the environment or the situation. Now I say, the jump in figures comes as millions adapt. So millions of people are having to change to radical measures. Now radical, if something is radical, it means it affects the fundamental nature of something. So radical means a huge change to the fundamental, the core nature of something. So these radical measures, a measure in this context means a plan or a, a, a course of action. So these radical measures just means these serious plans, these serious changes to the core way of living for Italians. So many Italians, millions of Italians are having to change, to adapt to these huge changes to the way they live that have been introduced in an attempt to contain the outbreak. If you're not sure what outbreak means, it's a, a sudden occurrence of something unwelcome. Usually um, we talk about um, an outbreak with things like viruses. If a number of people suddenly get an illness, it's an outbreak, it's quite unwelcome, it's quite sudden. But we can talk about our face, I've had a bit of an outbreak all over my face. Usually we'd turn it around, they might say I've had a breakout, a breakout. So it's usually something sudden and unwanted. So this outbreak everyone keeps talking about. Up to 16 million people in Lombardy and 14 province, provinces need special permission to travel under new quarantine laws, rules, sorry, not laws, rules. Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte also announced the closure of schools, gyms, museums, nightclubs and other venues across the country. Okay, so we've got two words. Um, okay, no, one word. <laughs> we've got the word venue. Venue. You might not be familiar with this. Venue basically means a place where something happens. So your house isn't a venue unless you're holding an event there. So if you're having a party in your house and you're inviting lots of people, you might say the venue is my house, but usually you don't have events happening in your house. So your house is not normally a venue, but places like social clubs, maybe a church, um, a, a concert hall, schools, places where public, pe public people get together and do things where there's events happen. That is a venue. And so Giuseppe Conte, the Prime Minister, has announced the closure of schools, gyms, museums, nightclubs and other venues across the whole country. The restrictions will last until the 3rd of April. Now, I'm going to share this link when I finish broadcasting in the description. But what you'll read is three and then April. So it says the restrictions will last until three April. But the way we speak this is to add the word the. Then we add third. We say third instead of three. Sometimes you'll see it written with a little RD above the three to represent third. And then we say of April, the 3rd of April, although that isn't how it's written. It's written the, um, until 3 April, but never say that, it's very strange. Um, the restrictions will last until the 3rd of April. Okay, I'm going to answer some of your questions now because I can see lots and lots of um, comments coming in. 
So um, I'm just going to scroll back a little way. Can you say um, the two words adapt and adopt? Adapt and adopt. Adapt, adopt. Adapt, adopt. Can you see the difference in my mouth shape? Adapt is wider. Ah, adapt. And that means to change for your environment. Adopt is to take something on. So, for example, I might adopt a child if I decided to look after a ch somebody else's child permanently. I would adopt them. That means I take them on permanently. And that means I would have to adapt, I would have to change my lifestyle in order to look after this child. So to adapt and adopt, that helps. Um, I'm afraid to visit Italy, says Parmash. So I think there's a lot of fear around the coronavirus. And my personal view is, unless you are vulnerable, if you have an immune immunity issue, if you're um, immune suppressed, perhaps you're dealing with cancer or you have severe asthma or anything that's around um, your respiratory system, your lungs, your breathing. If you have severe issues or you have anything that's suppressing your immunity, like cancer and you're taking treatment for it. If you're vulnerable, then you need to be very, very cautious. For the rest of us, if you're not old and you're not vulnerable, then I don't think we have to be scared. I think the important thing is to stop the spread of this virus because of how disruptive it is. It's not that it's going to kill millions and millions of people. It's not a really dangerous virus in that respect. The worst thing about it is how fast it spreads, meaning that Hospitals, which are already already at full capacity at this time of year, they're already very full and very busy, suddenly have hundreds and thousands of cases of people who are vulnerable and old, mostly, struggling with this virus all at the same time. There are difficulties in getting enough supplies for all of them. You take down the workforce around the world by a huge percent, and that's, that's the worrying thing about this virus. It's not that it's going to kill millions of people. It will kill a lot of people, but it won't kill millions. Um, so don't be scared of it in that respect. The worrying thing is more about what it's doing to the economy. And um, yes, businesses are going to, to suffer um, getting paid if, you're, if your company has to close down for a little while. <clears throat> education will be disrupted. So it's worrying in that respect, but don't be scared. Just follow the advice of your government and your medical professionals. Okay, um, in France, the situation's getting worse. Yes, it's getting worse in many places. Um, okay, so let me see. I'll talk about England at the end. Um, <laughs> Uh, I wonder if this virus is a weapon or not. Oh, I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. Um, you make careful and good decisions in your life. You may be a bit of a control freak, but you like being in control. Yes, that's right. A control freak. Um, hmm, I'm not sure if that must be a reply to somebody else. Okay, I'm going to carry on with the lesson. So where were we up to? The latest figures mean Italy now has the highest number of confirmed infections outside China, where the outbreak originated in December. It has overtaken South Korea, where the, num the total number of cases is nearing 7,400. So it's two words there. The word originated. Originate, to originate, it means where it started, where it was created. I originate from the north of England. That's where I was created. That's where I started my life. Um, and then we have the word overtaken. The word overtaken means that it becomes greater than, to become greater than. So if one figure overtakes another, it becomes a greater figure 
than the previous. You can overtake someone physically as well if you're driving and you want to get past someone, you overtake them. If you're do running a race and you pass another runner, you overtake them. So it means to get further than or to be greater than. Okay, so it says here the numbers um, are the highest outside China where the outbreak originated in December. Um, it has overtaken South Korea. So the numbers have overtaken those in South Korea where the total number of cases is 7,400. Okay. Oh, Helian, thank you so much for your very kind um, donation there. That's that's very sweet of you. Um, can wearing a mask protect from coronavirus? No. So wearing a mask will not protect you from getting the coronavirus. If you are sick, you feel ill, you're coughing, then wearing a mask will help to protect others from your spread. So when you're coughing, you're spreading out the droplets and coronavirus is going on to lots of surfaces and potentially other people. So if you're sick, wear a mask. If you're not sick, then a mask will not help you. Okay, the best thing you can do is just regularly, thoroughly wash your hands and do some social distancing. So stop hugging to greet, stop kissing to greet, stop shaking hands to greet. Instead, do an elbow bump. Hey, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. Or do a foot bump, bump your feet together, but stop touching each other because it's that it's that passing on of, of germs on our hands, that's already on our faces, it's passing on. So social distancing and hand washing is the best thing you can do. Okay, so um, um, Mustafa says, what's the difference between muzzle and musk? Do you mean muzzle and mask? Or do you mean musk? Because musk is a, a scent that animals give off. And sometimes we call spray a uh, perfume for men a musk. It's a smell, it's a pheromone. Usually animals squirt their musk up the um, up trees and things. And a muzzle is something you put over a dangerous animal usually. It's uh, to prevent them from biting. Okay, so some of you complaining that I'm not replying to your messages is because there are so many and I can't see them. It's nothing personal. All right, let's carry on. So the next paragraph. Italy has one of the world's oldest populations. The virus is particularly dangerous for the elderly and those with underlying health conditions. Among the latest people to test positive in Italy is the army's chief of staff, Salvatore Fari Farina. He said he felt well and was self-isolating. The strict new quarantine measures affect a quarter of the Italian population and center of the rich northern part of the country that powers the economy. Okay, so they use the word strict there when talking about the new quarantine measures. If you're not familiar with this word, to be strict is to demand that rules concerning behavior are obeyed. So I might say to you, hey, I don't want you to go out of the house. But if you go out of the house, I might be like, no, okay, I told you you shouldn't, but it doesn't matter. But if I'm strict and I catch you going out of your house, I might um, come up to you and give you a fine and say, no, I'm fining you a hundred pounds for leaving your house. Or I might use brute force to push you back inside your house. I'm being strict. I'm forcing the rules on you about to do with behavior normally strict is used to do. If you're a strict parent, it means that you, um, you have very firm rules and the children mustn't break those rules. Perhaps they're grounded quite a lot if they do. Okay, yes, teachers used to be stricter in the past. Okay, so carrying on. Ah, now it says that um, and the, nor the rich northern part of the country powers the economy. Now in this sense, to power the economy, power in this sense means the force, a force to impact. 
So the northern part of Italy um, it has so much power on the economy. It influences the economy a lot because there's more money, I'm guessing, in the north of Italy. And so with the north of Italy being heavily impacted by the coronavirus, it's having a big impact on the economy. Okay, so let me carry on. The health system is under immense strain in Lombardy, a northern region of 10 million people, where people are being treated in hospital corridors. Okay, so the health system is under immense strain. Now, immense just means huge, large, big. Um, and to be under strain is to be under stress, to be under pressure. Okay, um, so to be under immense strain is to be under great pressure, great stress. Um, and it says that people are being treated in hospital corridors. Now, a corridor, if you're not familiar with it, is the walkway between spaces. So it's not a, a room. It's not a place of function. Its only function is to let people travel between areas, between zones. So a walkway inside a building, a corridor. So people are now being treated. Intensive care cases, so people who are seriously dealing with life-threatening um, illness are now being treated. I've gone down because I'm not kneeling anymore. And now being treated in corridors. That's how drastic the situation has come. We want to guarantee the health of our citizens. We understand that these measures will impose sacrifices, sometimes small and sometimes very big. Prime Minister Conte said as he announced the measures in the middle of Saturday night. Under the new measures, people are not supposed to be able to enter or leave Lombardy, where Milan is the main city. Okay, so there I said the word, um, these measures will impose sacrifices. So to impose something is to force something onto somebody. Um, I often think about this as... Um, when you go to somebody's house and maybe you haven't announced that you're going or maybe they know you're going to their house but you bring along lots of other people maybe you bring your partner and your children and a friend and you'll go into the house and you'll say to them i hope we're not imposing so i hope i'm not forcing all this on you i hope i hope it's okay um or you can impose a law or impose a rule. It means that you force it. Okay, so to impose, to force something. And it's usually used um, in a sense of it being unwelcome. It's a, quite a negative thing. It's unwelcome. It's forced. So these measures will impose sacrifices. Now, a sacrifice is to give something up. Um, so the people in Italy perhaps um, are having to sacrifice going home. Maybe they were visiting the north of Italy and actually they live in the south of Italy. And now they are stuck in the north until the 3rd of April. And so they have to sacrifice going home. Maybe the other way around, people outside of um, the north of Italy are wanting to return home to the north and they can't, they can't enter. Maybe they have to be separated from their loved ones, their children, um, their elderly parents, perhaps. They don't want to visit them in case they give them the virus. So there's lots of sacrifices that people are having to make um, as well as obviously work sacrifices as well and financial sacrifice. Okay, so that's as far as I'm going to go on that article. I'm happy to answer a few questions now. Um, <clears throat> I do hope that everyone is remaining calm and isn't being put out too much by this virus. Um, in the UK, we currently have around, I think last count, it was about 278 um, people have the coronavirus here it's very spread out across the country which suggests 
that we're going to see huge numbers here because it's dotted out all over the place, which means they don't have a specific area where the outbreak is concentrated. And therefore we, um, we are getting ready to move into the next phase. Our prime minister is currently in an emergency meeting to decide what to do next. And so, yes, I live very close to the capital. There are approximately 9 million people in this area. We're very compact. And so I think it's highly likely that we will end up in lockdown at some point too. So yes, it's quite concerning. Um, all right, let's have a look um, at what you guys are saying. I'm going to share this link with you so that you can um, read this article yourself. I've just shared that in the chat and I'll also put it into, once I finish the broadcast, I'll put it into the description so you can see it there as well. But it's on the BBC what news website for worldwide news. Um, okay, I've read that there is a supercomputer that has identified some substances that can destroy the virus. All this in two days with a normal computer. Really? Um, so what I know about the vaccine is that um, although they're making great progress with the vaccine, it has to go through testing. And I think they're at the point of human testing now. I think they're human trialing what they found, but it has to go through strict human trials before they can then mass produce and release it. And so as far as I know, the official word is that there will be no vaccine available until next year, early next year. <clears throat> um, hello everyone who's joining me. Um, please elucidate me about the meaning of pandemic. So I covered pandemic in the previous live lesson, so do go and catch up on that. But very briefly, pandemic just means when a virus has spread across the world. When you see a huge spread of people catching the same virus around the same time across the world. That is pandemic. Um, Radia says, I have asthma, so I'm likely to be affected. Yes, if you have asthma, obviously that's slightly more concerning, but don't be too scared. Just keep yourself distant from people. No hugging and kissing and um, wash your hands often. But try not to worry. There's no point in, in us losing sleep and getting too stressed and worried about this. Um, someone's just asked, what does dabble mean? Um, to dabble in something is to try something a little bit. So I, I often dabble in a bit of piano playing so I do it a little bit um, okay okay let me just um, find a comment to respond to um, hi we are not having any funerals or weddings no degree sessions at all but home just as work so you work from home however every other activity is stopped yeah, unfortunately, all public gatherings in Italy, I think, have been have been stopped. So you can't even get together for things like funerals and things, which must be very distressing for those people who have unfortunately lost someone during this time. Um, virus. A virus is something long term. Um, a fever is a symptom. Fever is when you're hot, when your temperature is above what is normal. So that's a fever and that's a symptom of having a virus. I feel a bit hot myself, actually. It's because I'm talking. Um, and a disease is long term. It's something that um, means that you it's, it's degenerative. Over time, it gets worse. So someone with a disease over time will get worse in their health unless it's somehow treated. So that's that's the difference. I hope that helps. And I hope that was accurate. <laughs> um, do you pronounce the letter P in the word symptom? Symptom. Yes, you do. It's, it's close to T. So some people might say sim, sim, symptom. No, you can pronounce the P. Absolutely pronounce the P. Symptom. Simp, symptom. Um, do you think heat will kill the virus? No. 
I think heat will slow the, the virus down potentially, but it won't kill the virus. I'm sure there are people here whose countries have been affected by the coronavirus already that are in hotter climates than, than what we are at the moment. Um, yes, if the pandemic is declared officially by the World Health Organization, it's unlikely that the Olympics will go ahead. Um, but I'm not an expert. I just watch a lot of news. That's all. I'm, but, you know, I, I don't take my word for it. Just if you're not sure, then double check it with the news outlets. Um, I know two UK teams are running their models to predict the trend. One is the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine and one is the Imperial College London. One Hong professional professor said so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lots of people are working hard to to obviously find the cure. Um, should we use the article the with coronavirus? Depends on the circumstance. I've seen both. I've seen people talk about coronavirus without the and people using the in terms of thinking about virus, the virus. Um, so I think you can do both. I don't think there's a strict rule about it. Um, what about the economy? The economy everywhere is absolutely tanking. Tanking is a slang term meaning going down very fast. So earlier we heard shot up, meaning to go up fast. But if something is tanking, it's going down fast. The economies are tanking because they are all very nervous about what is going on. This is probably worse for the, um, the economy than anything else. Um, do you pronounce the second R in regularly? No, regularly, regularly, regularly. You have to get the tongue flapping, regularly. Yes, Eugene, tanking, spelled T-A-N-K-I-N-G, tanking. Um, <clears throat> uh, okay, so um, lots of people obviously talking about what they think should and shouldn't have happened. Um, some people don't think their governments have dealt very well with what's gone on. Um, it's hard to know. I'm not an expert on it, so I'm not going to make any judgments myself. Um, I think the most important thing at this time is to be calm and to be kind to people. I've seen lots of reports of um, abuse and racism and people fighting over toilet rolls. I've literally seen people having a fist fight over buying toilet rolls. People are getting a little bit crazy over the coronavirus. And so I think we just have to remain calm and kind. And remember that everyone is in a, the same situation here. It's not something we've dealt with before. And so we have to just try and remain, what's the word, respectful and just calm, calm down. Um, okay, are there any more questions I can answer here? <laughs> All right, I'm going to, I'm going to end it there, I think. We've just gone over 30 minutes, but thank you so much for joining me. I do hope you found this helpful. I will post the link to the article that I read in the, in the description just after I finish now. And I hope that you can all find some normality over the next few months through what is likely to be a continued saga. So a saga is like an issue or something that goes on for a very long time. Um, so this saga, the coronavirus saga, will continue. And I hope that you can find some form of normality in your life and try not to panic. And of course, I hope that all of you remain healthy and unaffected. Um, I'm going to try and do a live lesson every Monday. I can't guarantee it, but I will try. And so hopefully you'll join me next Monday. Otherwise, um, I'm going to jump over to Facebook and repeat the same lesson. So if you want to come and join me again, then uh, then come and join me. All right, guys. Whoa. Oh, there's my son. Isn't he pretty?
And there's a lion up on the wall. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll see you soon. Um, how do I stop this thing?